Okay, so um, for today, we are, we're not going to be using our naming and formula writing from chapter 9 today. We are going to use it tomorrow. Okay, so um, this morning I tricked out first hour and made them get out their periodic tables and flip charts and polygonic ions and then, you know, after notes, we didn't use it. So that's going to be for tomorrow. Um, today, we're going to be talking about moles and um, Avogadro and all the stuff that we like touched on very, very briefly on mole day. Does anybody remember mole day? What did we do on mole day? Olympics. We did the mole Olympics on mole day. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> this is a celebration for chemistry, but um, we celebrated then because we didn't know what a mole was yet, but thankfully we get to get to moles in, chapter, in the first semester today, so we can do that. A mole is a substance, or a, a mole of a substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 representative particles of that substance. Um, moles an SI unit, remember? Um, I said this before. It's a way that we can compare different things on the periodic table. It compares everything to the periodic table, okay? Um, we can't actually physically measure moles ourselves, but we can do calculations using the mole map that I just gave you um, to solve for moles, and then we can compare things, okay? So, SI unit is the most important thing. Okay, so this number, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, is called Avogadro's number. He's named after this guy, good looking fellow right there, um, who helped clarify the difference between atoms and molecules. So, um, sometimes I'm just going to say, instead of saying the whole big number, I'm just going to say Avogadro's number, and that's what I'm talking about, okay? Um, so that we're using that. The mole map that I just gave you, um, I actually changed it up this year, and um, this we're using side one, mole map one, um, today and for this whole chapter. The stoichiometry mole map on the back, number two, that is for chapter 12. So they're almost identical, but there's something a little bit different we have to do in chapter 12. So that's why you get a different one. And instead of having two different pieces of paper, you just have one piece of paper to use, okay? Uh, so we're gonna write some stuff in in just a second on here to help you out. And then we will start using it. Okay, so yeah, I just did that. A representative particle is the circle that we're talking about today from the mole map. And representative particles refers to species, usually atoms, molecules, and formal units. So atoms are used whenever we're dealing with like just plain old elements like zinc or copper or sulfur or ca carbon or something like that. They're just plain old elements by themselves, okay? Molecules are used when we use our diatomic molecules, our Honk fiber, okay? Um, they're also used when we have molecular compounds, so like carbon dioxide or something like that. When you have a molecular compound, we can be using molecules. And then formula units are used with ionic compounds. Um, and I did mention that back a while ago, in chapter seven, I think. Um, so, but these tell us, the mole tells us how many representative particles are in a sample of a substance. So, everybody grab your flip chart, or not your flip chart, your mole map. All these words. We are gonna write something down. So today, we are gonna be using the mole circle we're going to be using the representative particle circle, and we're going to be using the ion circle, okay? So in the representative particle circle, we can write down our three representative particles so that it reminds yourself <laughs> that that's the circle I'm talking about when I see those words. So we can have atoms, we can have molecules, and then we can have formula units all in there. Okay. In your notes, um, I put next to molecules and formula units my abbreviations for them. So when I, whenever you see a notes or whenever you see me do anything or on the study or on the answer keys, I use those abbreviations because these are some pretty long words. Um, atoms, it's pretty short in the grand scheme, so I just write the whole thing atom out. Um, 
molecules and mole are very, very similar. So to abbreviate mole, I usually write M-O-L. So if you want to write M-O-L in there, you can. You just take off the E, but it's still okay. Um, if you want to write the whole E down, or E-S for moles, you can. Um, then, for representative particles, we just use the whole word atom. For molecules, if you put M-O-L for molecules and M-O-L for moles, it looks just like the same exact thing. And this whole chapter is about canceling units. So you need to like show a distinction. So I say M-O-L-E-C, molec, is how I say it, for molecule. Okay? And then formula unit we call fun because we have so much fun in chemistry class. Da, da, da. Alright. So going back to our notes. We're going to use those circles. Um, there is a special case when we can go one step further. There is a typo in your note packet. I apologize. It has been fixed for future times. Um, if you want to make it work, just make it work in yours. It's supposed to say representative particle for a formula unit is an ion. So that sentence is kind of jammed up. I accidentally deleted the wrong thing. Okay. Um, so that shows us that on the mole map we have not only uh, arrows that are connecting the moles and the formula units, or but there's also connecting the representative particles and the ion as well. It's, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme. Just write down fun. <coughs> yeah, just write down fun. Okay, so, yeah, because we will have so much fun. Um... <coughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to be doing conversions now, all right? To convert, we are using dimensional analysis. This is the parentheses dividey stuff that we did back in chapter three, seven chapters ago, a long time ago, okay? Um, you're, we're going to have a method to the madness. So if you do the steps like we do in examples, all the steps that I do, and ask yourself all those questions, you'll be golden. If you can do it without doing all those steps, that is perfectly fine too. Um, but the reason why we're doing the dimensional analysis is because in chapter 12, when we have to use the other side of the mole map, they're going to be more involved problems. And so if we can get the method down now, it'll be super easy for when we're there later. Okay? And I've had a lot of people today tell me that this is so much easier than when we first learned it in chapter 3. Because it makes sense. The mole map is basically telling you what to write down in the parentheses. Okay? So it, it really kind of just works itself out. And these are math problems, so you do get partial credit, but if you don't show any work and get the wrong answer, you get zero credit sort of thing. So it's always good to show your work so I can see what you did and where you might have went wrong, okay? So we're going to do example one and two, and then we're finished for the day. We have a worksheet to work on. Um, and we're going to practice these two steps. And we're dealing with the mole circle, the representative particle circle, and the ion circle on our on our mole map, okay? So, for example one, magnesium is a light metal used in the manufacture of aircraft, automobiles, and tools. How many moles of magnesium is 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium? So, what I always like to do is plan my attack. So, I think about, so if we're using the, the mole map, we need to think about what circle are we starting in and what circle are we ending in. Okay, and it has to do with units that are mentioned in the problem. So, where are we going to start? Who wants to take a guess? Where are we going to start? We're going to start with atoms. You're starting with whatever unit is on the number. So, yeah, we're going to start representing a particle. So, atoms is our start, which that's representative particles. So, if you want to put RP to remind yourself that's representative particles, go for it. And then we're going to end where? What are we trying to find? What's the whole point of this problem? Moles. <coughs> so we're going to end at the mole circle. So this is telling us that we're going to start at the representative particles and go to moles. The next thing, before we look at our mole map, we need to write the number from the problem over 1 in our big parentheses setup. Okay? So I'm going to put 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd atoms over 1. And 
then we're going to have one more parenthesis that we have to fill in. But using our mole map, we'll be able to tell right away what to fill in. So once everybody's written this down, I'm going to flip to the mole map so we can see what it looks like. Yep, it's this number right here in the words. Okay, if I flip, it's going away. Okay, so go back to our mole map. We said just now that we are starting with atoms and we're ending at moles. So what circle are we starting at? Representative particles. So on your paper, put your finger there. And notice how all these connections between the circles are arrows. There's two of them. So you have to use the arrow that's pointing in the direction that you want to go. So if we're starting with representative particles and we want to end at moles, we're going to use the bottom arrow. Okay? So then this right here underneath the bottom arrow, the one mole over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, is what's going to go in that next parenthesis set. Okay? The only thing that's going to be changed is instead of saying particles, we're going to use the particle that we're dealing with. So what's from the problem? Okay? The reason why particles is there is because we have three different types of particles. So, flipping back to our other. Um, so, on the bottom, you're going to have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But, we have to cancel. The whole point of this is canceling units. Okay? So, instead of writing particles with this, we are writing atoms with this. Because, we need to cancel out the word atom there. Okay? So, remember this stuff. We're multiplying across the top and across the bottom, or dividing if they're opposite each other. So, that's how atoms cancel away. We're left with moles, which is what we're trying to solve for. Okay? So then, we need to figure this out. You could condense it, or if you see that you're just going to divide already, you can go, excuse me, go ahead and divide. But condensing it down, we're going to have 1.25 times 10 to the 23rd over 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we're going to use our EE button on the calculator. Okay? So, let's refresh our memories on how to do this. So everybody grab your calculator. Remember, if you have mine, the EE button is above the 7. If you have a graphing calculator, it's probably really close to that, but you're going to have to hit second and then hit that. If you have the button that says times 10 to the N, you need to put your numbers in parentheses. If you have the EXP button, use that. So all this is where all our calculators might be a little different. Okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started typing. Ready? We start with 1.25 and then hit EE and the little boxes show up on mine. Or you have an E on your calculator if you hit the other button. Um, remember, we don't hit times and we don't hit 10. So those boxes mean it. So now I'm going to put in 23 divided by 6.02 EE -E, 23 equals Yay, it's saved. Great. What do you get? I'm so thankful. Every long decimal. Every long decimal. So 0 0.20 what, 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 what? You got Perfect. I'm just going to stop at 4. Okay. What do you think we have to do on this number? Round it. Round it to significant figures. How do you know where the zig figs come from? The number in the problem. So if I have 1.25 right here times 10 to the 23rd, remember, scientific notation does not count in your significant figure counting. No. So we have 1, a 2, and a 5. So that's a total of three significant figures. So when I'm rounding my number, the 0 in front does not count. So I'm going to cut off between the 7 and the 6. Am I going to round up? Yes. 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 All right. So 2.208. And then what's my unit? Oh. And that's it. Okay, let's do example two and we are finished. Okay?
Sam Braza. That is the answer. Yes, sir. They're up here. Thanks. All right, I'm erasing. Come on. Maybe no technical difficulties this time. How many molecules are in 2.12 moles of propane? Which, in case you were wondering, propane is C3H8. All right. What are we starting? Which circle are we starting in this time? Moles, because 2.12 moles is our start. Okay, and what are we trying to find? <coughs> molecules. Which molecules? I'm going to write molec for molecules, and that is in the representative particles section, so I'm going to put RP to remind myself of that. Now, next step is put the number in the problem over 1. So we have 2.12 moles over 1. Then we need to look at our mole map to determine what to do next. So, this time, we're starting in the mole circle, and we're going to the RP circle. So, we're going to use the top or the bottom arrow? The top arrow. The top arrow says to put Avogadro on top this time. So, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and I'm not going to put particles. I'm going to put what I'm trying to find, which is molecules. Molec, for short over one mole. Notice how molecule and mole can be very similar if you don't abbreviate them differently. Okay. Now, our moles can cancel away. And this time, both numbers are on the top. So, that means we're going to multiply across. Okay. So, I'll do the calculator again just in case you need it. But if you wanted to try yourself and see if you get the same answer, that would be goldenly perfect. Why did you cancel away? They cancel away. Because one's on top and one's on bottom. Just a unit. Oh. Not just a label. Okay, the number doesn't cancel out. So, here we go. 2.12 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 equals, what do you get? <coughs> okay, 2, 4. And then, this, on my calculators, it probably looks like this right here. Remember when that happens, we have to be smarter than the device that we're using. We have to plug back in times 10 after we round to sig figs. So how many sig figs do I round to? Three sig figs. So I'm going to cut off. The one does count, so between the seven and the six. 1.28 times 10 to the 24th. And our unit is? Molecules. Molecules. All right, that's it. We're done. <laughs>